All right, so starting in 12 seconds, so let's let's get ready. Okay, here we are. Everything looks good. It all looks good. It all looks amazing. I think it looks good. Let me check. Yeah, board looks good on, on OBS. So, all right, let's go. Okay, so we get to play against Ilya Joke. Uh, and Ronald, let me move the microphone just touch off center. Uh, just because I lost last game, I want us to play the... Play the Ali Ekans defense to get off the Schneid in round two. Now I'm gonna use the same same board, I think, for this. Let's go G6. Thank you so much to X the King for the five. Thank you to Lazarus for the uh for the five as well. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, now I guess I'll take with the C pawn. It's a little bit scary doing this, but I'll do it anyway. Let's go here in castles. I guess he's not playing C4. Go here. I have knight c6 next move, of course. Uh, bishop e3, d5. This is all very standard theory. I've had this many times. Who did we lose to in round one? I round 11. I lost to Pravion. All right, this is already a little bit better for black. Um, I think the first time I ever studied this line was all the way back in um, maybe like 2004. It's been a long time, but I was playing the Ali Atkins defense a little bit back then. He goes to h3, so I take, I go here, 97, f5. This is traditionally already considered a little bit better for black. Bornick plays this, yeah, if you get this position, this is already a little bit favorable for black. Now, b4, b4, a6, a4, or b6, a6, b4 first, I believe, was the correct move, because now I'm a little bit too fast with knight f5, knight h4, hitting the pawn. And now knight e2, knight h4, this is very hard to play for white. I'm already much better here. <clears throat> Thank you so much a lucky viewer for the 20 months. Thank you so much a lucky viewer. Appreciate it. Okay, let's go knight h4. Again, he moves to knight. Okay, so now I'm able to cripple the pawns. I have knight a5. I also have knight e7. Um, let's go this way to go knight f5, I guess. Again, these pawns are very, very weak here for white. So it's very hard to play this. Although I suspect knight a5, knight c4 was a better try. H5, maybe not so smart, but eh. Feels good for me. Feels good. Okay, goes queen d2. I guess I'll play h4 to kick the knight out. Put the knight back on f5. Again, a lot of pressure here for white to deal with, so I should be much better. Now, that's a good move. Um, <clears throat> He's trying to break through. Hmm. We'll go here. C6 just takes, maybe. I might go F6, E5 pretty soon. Yeah, I think I have to go E5 and try to open. So otherwise, eventually these pawns become too fast. I thought you were gonna change boards for this TT. Uh, I mean, I started with this board. Why not keep it? Today is Throwback Tuesday. You know, Marshall for the twenty. Thank you so much, Lucky Viewer for the twenty. Thank you, Valerie R for the nineteen. I mean, I guess E five must be right just to open it up. I think this is good enough. I mean, how does White guard all the pawns? Now I take and I still have queen f3. I also have d4. Oh, there's queen b3. Whoops. I can take g1. <clears throat> e4 actually looks pretty solid with rook f3. d1. I guess I just... Uh... So let's take... <clears throat> I have rook f3 next move. I also have rook f5. <clears throat> Should be pretty good.
TikTok. Now I just start pushing the pawns, and now the pawns are way too fast. Should be GG. Uh, what is the easiest way to win here, I guess? Uh, <clears throat> D3 is obviously very strong. Maybe not best ball play, because I can trade and go here. Let's trade. Let's go here to hit the pawn at E3. Let's take. I mean, everything wins here. I just want to be a little bit precise. So let's just... Take, I'm up what, four pawns? Let's go here. And go D2 if I want. Okay, we got the dub, one up, one down, pretty good first game. Let's move around, let's see who else is playing. Why is it not still competitive and Kasparov isn't in your opinion? Um, I think because Gary's not studying chess and Gary isn't really making an effort to play that much. I mean, if Gary played one tournament, I wonder how he would do. I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard to judge, um, but yeah. Do you follow any esports besides chess? I mean, of course I follow League of Legends a little bit. Um, so that's one I follow. All right, King F4, of course. <clears throat> Is that a nuclear blast shining from your window? No, you guys, that's not, but thank you. Thank you so much to Auron Light for the uh, 10 months. Thank you so much to Trace RT for the 10. Thank you to Carlos CC again for the uh, 6. Jose wins. Let's move along and see what else do we have here. Oh, round two. Here we go. Okay, so let's go here. All right, let's play E4, D4. Actually, D4 is a bad premium, but whatever. Let's go here. Plays h5, that's kind of a strange move. I think I'm gonna go here and put pressure on the knight, maybe. I mean, you can play f6, I guess, but it looks very weird. Let's go c3, of course. Can obviously trade. I think I'm gonna trade and just play this end game, maybe. Let's take. I know this is great, actually, by me, but it feels like I should be better here with knight c4. Thank you so much to check Ariel for the nine months. Thanks for check Ariel. Appreciate it. Thank you. 93 was also a move to stop B5, I guess, but I think 92 is fine too. Uh, let's see what he does. <clears throat> Man, this dude is slow. This guy is very slow. Okay, I'm gonna go knight c4, knight d6 ideas abound. Can play a4, I can also just castle, I guess. Just castle. I mean, I feel like something is gonna hang here very soon for my opponent. Um, can play a4. I just wanna stop b5, basically. Rook d2, rook d1 is also an idea somewhere in here. Very, very hard for Black to play. Are we going to see a live Kasparov again? I don't know if Gary will play. He'll probably play something here or there, but again, on the other hand, I don't know if Gary really wants to play, because if Gary plays and does badly, everyone's going to compare it against Vichy, and they'll be like, look at Gary, like, why is he not as good as Vichy? So uh, there is some danger there for Gary if he chooses to play. Um, I guess I'll go here and just force Knights off. Yeah, I mean, there, there is some actual danger for Gary if he plays. So if Gary plays and doesn't do as well as Vichy did, you know, it's not going to look... He, I mean, people are definitely going to make a bit a bit out of it. They're going to say, oh, look at Gary. By the way, he didn't move his king, did he? I don't think he did. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll go here to hit the knight. can obviously take on f3, but I just take, I guess. We'll see. Let's go here, idea bishop c6, idea bishop f7. I've got a really nice wooden shield here as well. Now I can take the pawn, I think, because of the penny pin pin. So this should just be very good for me unless I'm missing something very obvious.
Yeah, this looks terrible for my opponent. I think Gary Chess, yeah. No, uh, Gary played last year and it didn't go great. This is true. Um, I mean, that's the thing, though. Gary either will play because it's like he sees Vichy did well, and so he wants to play to prove he can do well, or he won't play because he knows if he does badly, everyone's going to compare it against what Vichy did, and they'll be like, why is Gary not as good as Vichy? And that's obviously not something you want. Okay, I guess I'll go here, hit the pawn. Actually, I think Bishop B3 is maybe not a precise move. It's still very good for me, but... Knight A5. Uh, all I have to do here is simplify. So let's go here. Let's get rid of these juicers. Okay, I guess I'll go here. Put the rook on a really nice square. Maybe Knight D2. I, yeah, yeah I'm, I can definitely take... He had Knight B3 fork, which is why I go Knight D2 here. I guess I'll just go here and Rook D7. Okay, let's just go, I don't know, F3. So go here, maybe Knight F1 next move. Knight G3, hit the pawn. Let's go here, hit the pawn. Just take, go G4. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm up a lot of material. Let's just take H5, create the flying V here. The flying V, of course, very important to win the game. Let's go back. Let's just go here. Hmm. Now, I can take and probably win with the pawns, but I don't really want to make too much of a mess out of it. So, go A5, soften the pawns here a little bit here. I'm going to go A6. I don't have to. Start pushing the H pawn. I go here. I have H7. Let's go here. I can obviously take. Oh, he's got knight F7 here, so it's not so easy. So I have to walk the king back. Okay, we lose on time, so we get the win in round two. Let's see who else is playing. What do I think of the live blitz ratings? I spoke about it earlier on the first one we did earlier today. Uh, I think, you know, when FIDE came up with the initial idea of having rapid and blitz rating lists, there were literally only two tournaments in the world that were held in rapid or blitz. And they were the, uh, there was the um, Aeroflot Blitz, which was also known as, um, uh, which was also, or no, Aeroflot Blitz, and there was the Tal Memorial Blitz, which was sometimes known as the World Blitz Championship. Those are the only two tournaments being held. So it's so only two tournaments having a K factor of 20 made perfect sense. But nowadays the Rapid and Blitz tournaments literally every month, if not every week for that matter. So the K factor should be back to five where it is for classical chess because everybody's playing Rapid all the time now. So I, I hope they change it because again, at some point what's going to happen if they don't uh, if they don't change the K factor, somebody's going to get red hot and they're going to go to like 3000. And it's really going to make a mockery of the whole rating system that they have for Rapid and Blitz. Um, and when that happens, then the problem is it's not so much someone gets like 29, 3000, it's that it's just a joke and like no one can take it seriously. So then you shouldn't really have those, that, those ratings in the first place. But yeah, I mean, when Fabiano, if Fabiano does really well and goes to like 3000 feet, it probably then they'll, they'll realize and change it. But, um, again, the K factor should just be regular, um, reg regular past a certain point. It's amazing the amount of talking you can do nonstop. Uh, I try to talk as much as I can. If you can't talk a lot, generally it's very hard to be a professional streamer. So I, I, I've gotten used to it and that's that. But anyway, what am I drinking? I have some of my freshly ground coffee right here. I also have my strawberry or my raspberry acai sparkling, uh, sparkling agua. So anyway, all right. What is K-Factor? That's the amount of points that are online with every game. So when we play a classical game, Say I play, um, who's my rating? Let's just say Anish, because I think Anish is literally the same rating I am. If I play Anish in a classical game, we're both 2760. So if we play a game, whoever wins the game gains five points, whoever loses, loses five points. Now, in Blitz and Rapid Chess, the K factor is 20. So what that means is, let's just say I play Anish and we're both 2800 in Rapid Chess. That means that if I beat Anish in a Rapid Chess game, I gain 20 points instead of gaining five. So the swings become way too drastic when you have a, a K factor of 20 points at stake for every single game versus five, like in classical chess. 
Thank you so much to uh, DL Noraje for the four months. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, T Dizzers. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, the World Rabbit Blitz. No, it's normal. No, it's not normal, you guys. The K Factor, I believe, is permanent. Or sorry, not twenty. It's ten. Sorry. No, the K Factor is ten. Sorry, not twenty. It's ten. But it's basically double what it is in classical, and I just I don't I, I don't like it. I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's good. So let's see. Let's go here. Let's go D. Oh, why am I playing the Karl Khan? Okay, let's play E5. Can I play this FM, who I've actually seen before? D4. Okay, I guess I'll go here and take. I'm willing to play an end game against Mr. Marco. See what he wants to do. Uh, let's go here, maybe. I might do something funky. Do I want to get funky or not? Is a question. I kind of want to get funky. Let's 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 get jiggy. I'm gonna get a little bit funky here with this opening. Let's go here. I have knight c6 maybe. I know this is actually good, but it looks funky and weird and all kinds of things. So I guess I'll go here. I, mean, I still have queen h4. I can also develop. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I don't know if this is actually good. Is g4 really a threat is a question. Let's go check. I mean, I can obviously castle here. It's just a question of whether I want to. Um, I think I'm going to go for it. Let's see. I mean, because I have c5, d4 here, which I think he missed. I mean, this is still very unclear. Plays a3. I mean, just go back. I'm going to play c5 and d4. This is going to get very wild. I don't know if this is actually good for me or not, but it looks wild. Oh, he just does that. Okay, I did not expect that. Now, I can play c5, d4. Uh, I think I will do this action, then maybe f5. Let's go here, target the knight. Bishop a6, I also have d3 and knight f4 lurking too. Takes, I take. Should be a little bit better for me, but I don't know how much better it is. Oh, he just trades, interesting. Uh, okay, so I guess I take with a bishop. I want to go d3 here. Or c4, d3. Um... Let's just go for c4 and d3, why not? I mean, his pawns are very scary once they start marching. Now, I can take with the rook, I guess. Seems fine. I mean, I have rook c6 or something. He's also to deal with rook g6 and bishop b7 at some point too. So this feels very hard to play for white. Goes bishop e1. Now the thing is though, I think I just fianchito and I go here. So let's go here. A lot of pressure now. Queen d5. Maybe h5, h4, h3 even. Let's go here. I'm going to play h4 of course. Oh, he gets rookie one though. Maybe I miss. I think I actually misplayed this a little bit. Let's just keep going though. Did I actually misplay this just a little bit, perhaps. Go here. Still feels like there's a lot of pressure though. I mean, everything is massing right towards this king side. And it goes rookie three. Logical. Huh, I don't have a way to punish him for this. Very annoying. Guess I'll just go. Um, guess I'll go here, maybe queen g5. Rook 
Rook F2. Go here just to consolidate so I have King H7. Was B3 interesting choice? I can play Bishop D5, I can also take the pawn. I was close to getting a new queen. Oh, do I have rook g2? No, I don't have rook g2. Huh. <sighs> Very tough. Hmm. Don't have anything good. Let's look over here and... This isn't what I want. I'm actually in a little bit of trouble here, maybe. Let's go here. I still shouldn't be able to lose this game, but it's not... It's not what I wanted, that's for sure. He's got no time, though. He's got 20 seconds. Okay, he does this. So I'll take, take. It's a threat. Rook queen b8. Let's go line him up on the diagonal. Okay, now I should have someone to be much better here. I guess let's go here. I just need to open up the scope for the bishop. Check. Let's go here. I have queen h3. I think it's okay, because I have king h7 here. Oh, uh, this is a blunder, because I can take, I think. Yeah, because now I take, take, and the d-pawn is too fast. Okay, we got the dub, three up, three down. Okay, oh wow, I got a tough fifth round pairing. I get Jigalka. Jeez, this is not a good fifth round pairing. Um, oh, let's just be solid here. He's, oh no, is he gonna make a draw? Oh no, he wants to play good. Okay, let's go here. Okay, plays B3, I'll play H6 here. Um. I'm gonna go a5 here, I don't have to, but it's a move. Okay, a4. I'm gonna go uh, here to start and then probably knight e7. I also can go bishop e7, but I'm gonna go here and knight g6, of course. Let's go here. Uh, let's see what he does. He plays knight e2 now. I actually do have c4 as a move here, but it's not the... Um, it's a move that I can play. It's a question of whether I want to do it or not. Um, but my instinct is that I should not do it. So I'm going to go knight g6 here and just play simple chess. c4 is definitely a move there, but I'm not in the mood to play it. Yeah, I play c4 himself. I think I'll go here threat and bishop c2. I can play uh, bishop c6 also at some point. All depends. Okay, let's just go, um, let's go here. Who's knight c3 now? I can play knight f4 here, I think. I think I'm gonna do it, actually. Maybe I'll play g5. I don't know if I should, but it seems reasonable. I've got knight d3. Can go back to e6. He does it, so now it's interesting, because now he gives me, this is a very rare Berlin endgame idea where I can play knight d3 and get the bishops. I'm actually kind of curious just to see what's happening here, so I'm gonna play it. I don't know if this is good or bad, but it's gonna be interesting at least. It's very rare, you almost never see uh, two bishops versus two knights in this endgame. Go there, I'll take, I guess I'll go here in bishop g7 maybe. Not really sure what's going on here. My instinct is that I'm probably 
very slightly better, maybe, although I'm not really sure. I guess they're logical. I guess I go here to target the Pawnee. It's Knight F6, maybe. Hmm. Now here I guess I just take. It's a very weird setup with the two bishops versus two knights. Very hard to judge as well who's better. But my instinct is that I'm probably better just because there's one weakness here. See what he does. Hmm. Okay, it does play knight f6, which I kind of thought he would do. Let's take, let's go here. I assume I have to be better here, because this pawn is super weak on f6. I can just take it. Again, though, he probably has ways to salvage the position. It's getting low on time, though. Also, pawns are on light squares, so they can be easily targeted here uh, by the bishop. I mean, he's in a little bit of trouble. So he goes there. Of course, I go here to take the pawn. Now, I can play h5 here. Okay, he has an idea to work d8. Hmm. h5 is no good. Bishop g6 and h5 is actually kind of an idea here. But do I really want to go for that as all... No, I think I should just be smart about this. Just be, but just be solid. Just make the draw here. Don't take too much undue risk if I don't have to. Here goes rook d7. I should go here. I think rook d7 was a mistake, actually. Wait, that looks like an insane move. Wait. Oh, maybe it's not so easy for me to prove, though. Huh. Okay, let's go here. So I, I assume I'm quicker winning all the pawns. Let's go here. Uh, I should not have allowed this. I still think I'm probably winning, though. Goes f4. So now I can obviously take and play rook d2 again. Rook d4 is also probably... I guess f5, f6, maybe. Hmm. Assume this is correct. Hmm. Still very tricky to play. Huh. Thank you so much, O'Toole Time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's go here. Hit the pawn. Still very hard to win. Hmm. Let's go here. Wait, that hangs a pawn. Wait, this should be winning. I have rook b2 here.
Wait, I have this and this. Actually, this just wins. Never mind. Yeah, there we go. Get the win. Five out of five. Thank you so much to uh, Calorio for the prime data. Uh, thank you so much to uh, O'Toole Time for the six months to need a mob zombie for the 18th. Finneve for the two. R's for the 13th. Thank you so much. Okay, we're on five out of five again. Very, very good start. Um, Dulles is on five. Angry Twin is on five. So pretty good so far. Pretty good. Can't complain. Let's watch Jose's game. Jose is playing against Antipov. Rook and Bishop versus Rook should be a draw here. Rook G3. Rook. Okay. Now you can just check check and it's a draw anyway. Yeah. Yeah, this game ends in a draw. Okay, so let's see what else do we have. Grishuk is playing Ibar. Grishuk is winning. Grishuk's gonna be on five too. Grishuk's gonna be on five, so this is getting very uh <laughs> King <laughs> Any cat I guess Pawn takes is uh not stalemate. But yeah, okay. So yeah, this is uh, looking like a very exciting, uh exciting day. What do we have? Grishuk and Duba both on five here. So let's see. Standings. Yeah, Grishuk's also on five, so this is a big, big day. Big dogs in it. So, okay, so I played Dulles with white. I'll probably be standard here. Let's be a little bit more standard. Actually, do we want, no, let's, uh, let's be standard. No, let's not be standard. Okay, whatever, I, I'm going back and forth too much there. Please win, we'll see. Okay, he's gonna pay, play solid. I actually kind of knew he was gonna do this. So we take, we castle, play like queen c2. I mean, again, the thing about this position though is that I can't really lose unless I press too hard. So that's kind of one of the reasons after like all that double, double, double hesitating is that I can't really lose this position. So if I can't really lose, then I mean, I just kind of just chill, I guess. Okay, it does play e5, interesting, okay, so. Hmm. Do you have e4, I also have knight c4. Hmm. Play e4, knight f4, I have g3, I think. It is fairly dry though, like more than a little dry. Mm. Okay, I'm a little bit down on time, so it's not that bad, but don't know why I allowed this. So I'll go here. I mean, I do have f4, maybe. Hmm. We'll see what he does. The fact that he's thinking so long is also a very good sign here. So he takes, so now the question is do I take or not? I think I do. Just to go back and then I go knight c4. Got this, I have e5, I have maybe a connect four even. Maybe a connect four. D8 is expected. I mean, e5 is a move here. And I'm gonna go e5 and knight d6.
I'm way up on the clock as well, which is good. Hmm. It was Rook C7, a reason, very reasonable move. Um, Queen E4 is a move. B4 is also a move. I don't like it. Um, F5 maybe is a move. Actually, what about F5? It's very tricky. I mean, I kind of want to do it, but I also don't. I think I'm just gonna play solid chess though. No, no need to get too creative here. I always have rook d6 if I need it as well. There's knight f8, Log very logical. So I'll go here. Problem is, as pieces come off the board, and it goes there. I mean, of course, I take and I go here. Still very tricky, though. Okay, let's go here. Let's start to chop at the structure. I have bishop c4 at some point. Is that not hanging something? I thought I could take. Oh, he's got 96. I didn't see that. Maybe I should check. I do this so he doesn't have rook c7. Oh, he's got this. Okay, I guess I just go here. Knight f5 is a good move. I'm definitely better here. I just have to prove it though. Let's just go here. Plays h5. I guess the idea is to play h4 at some point. Um, I do have knight c8, which I don't like. I do have h4, which I also don't particularly love. I know I'm better, but I, I actually, why am I thinking so long here? Um, oh my god, I missed 93. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't even see 93. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I just blundered bigly. Uh, I think I, I think I have to make a draw here. I just, oh yeah, yeah, that was very careless by me. Do I have knights? No, that was a horrible blunder by me. Yeah, I just had to make a draw here. I can't gamble. Yeah, I... Yeah, I let him off the hook. It's okay, it's it's not a big deal, but I... I, I mean, this was completely winning. Probably bishop g2 was wrong here. It's okay. And I should play rook d3, h4, and then what? And then I just take an, uh, of course. Yeah, very poor, very poor. But I mean, again, after after I miss his knight e3, it's also kind of scary here too. A little bit lucky he doesn't have something better like knight f4 and queen, queen f2. I'm assuming that doesn't actually work. Well, let me see, like queen f2. Queen f3, maybe it's better, yeah. It's a little bit scary. It's a big deal, I just lost channel points, yeah. Always a draw versus Dubov. No, actually, um, I've, I've made some mistakes in recent times, but okay, it's a draw. It's not the end of the world. I'm not thrilled by it, but it's okay. Oh no, I play Antipop, who's also on five and a half. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll be solid here. No reason not to be solid, but um, we'll see. Mm, 
it's just castle. It's going to be trades or plays bishop c2 here. Plays a5. Strange move. Um, What is the idea behind that move? I think I'm just going to go d5 and ask him what he's doing. I mean, he has bishop a4, bishop d7, but that doesn't look right at all. Does play bishop a4, so I can trade on e4. I can also play knight d7. Let's just go here and take, I guess. Like laterally, or not laterally, but I guard the pawn. I have knight c5 at some point. Maybe he goes b4, but I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of the way that Antipop has played this. If I take on c3, interesting. Okay, b4. I mean, f6 is probably completely fine. I'm just going to... I'm gonna play it and hope that I'm not losing somehow. Not so sure that f6 is a good move, but it seems like it's at least playable. I mean, he's got bishop b3 back. But then knight f8, I assume. He plays there, okay, so. Okay, just normal kind of position. I guess I'll go knight f8, why not? So I can always just take now. I mean, at some point, I guess he plays b5, but I don't really know what's going on here. He plays knight h4, which I think is actually a mistake. Um, and trade. Question is, how aggressive do I want to be here? D4 is actually the move that I kind of want to sack something. I don't know why. I kind of want to sack an exchange here. On I kind of want to do it. Let's just do it. This might be wrong, but I'm, I'm having some fun. I'm going to try to be creative with knight B4. Yeah, I'm going I'm to go for this. And I go knight c6, I target the pawn at a5 here. d2, I have knight g6 here, I also can just go knight d7 maybe. Let's go here on bishop c5. Let's go here, force pieces off the board. Yeah, knight f5, I expected that. I think queen f8 is still fine. Forcing him to trade. Got a great knight on, on c5 now, and c6. Knight h5, I think, runs into g6. Plays h4. Oh, h4 is a good move, actually. Do I have... Wait, g6? Wait. Queen h... No, wait a second. I think he blundered. Because here I have here... No, he actually made a huge blunder. He just trapped his knight. Yeah, he made a huge blunder, because now there's no knight retreat, either. And the knight is just completely dead. So I take, he's going to take with a pawn. Okay, I should be winning here. It's just a matter of putting pieces on the right squares. Um, is D, I assume d7 is right just to keep an eye on the pawn and queen h6 probably. Okay, of course I go here. Knight on c5 is a god too. It just stops everything. So I did give him this. Hmm. I mean, I have to trade. What am I thinking about? I guess I go here on bishop c6, maybe? I mean, if I line up this diagonal, this looks pretty deadly. I think I should be winning here. Queen h5 is also probably just winning, but it seems like a good way to line up the op. Yeah, but now, I mean, this must be winning. I have queen h4. I think I just go here, maybe, and rook g8. I'll pre-move this because he could do it, but 
Goes queen e7, so now I guard, I threaten checkmate, f3. I can actually take the pawn. I can also play just rook e8, though. Let's just kick the queen out of town. Oh, I hung that. Whoops. Oy, oy, oy. Oh, that was a big mistake by me. Whoops. Okay, let's go back. Why did I play that? That was so bad. Okay, let's just go here, force a trade. I mean, I am winning here because I have knight g4. Let's go uh, here. Let's go here, guard the pawn. I can always go e4. I can also just run the king up as well. Uh, just go here, I guess. I mean, he's probably going to have to sack, but this is just losing. Yeah. Let's go here. I have rook d7, and I don't think he can stop the pawn. Let's go here. Yeah, he can't stop the pawn. Knight's too fast. Yeah, we got the win. Very good. Very, very good. We got a win. We moved to six and a half out of seven. Uh, we'll see who's still playing. Let's click on the games. Okay, Grishuk and Dulles. We have the Battle Royale. Um... Grishuk, or not Grishuk, sorry. Dubov should be slightly better. He's got, he's got what, two pawns and a knight for the rook. And the pawns are fixed, but I still think this is... Unless Grishuk is really careless, I think this will be a draw. My instinct is this will be a draw. Well, maybe not, because now rook f2. Nah, this, this should be a draw now. Rook f2, king e5, rook f8. Yeah, this will be a draw, most likely. Dubob misplayed it. Rook h8, rook h6. Rook b8 also is a, maybe a move. Okay, it goes that way. So yeah, we're going to get takes and takes and like bishop e6 and we're going to get a draw. It should be a draw. Well, here rook g7. Yeah, okay. Time though. Time actually is a problem, Grishup. Here and back. Rook g8. G5, yeah. Yeah, this will be a draw very soon, I think. Yeah. Yeah, game has in a draw, so they draw their game. Which does mean that I should be leading now, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Let's wait for the scores to refresh. Okay, so I'm in the clear lead by half a point. We have got one, two, three, four, five, six guys on six points right now. Okay, here we go. We get Jose here. I'm going to get back to basics. Just play simple chess here. If it's a draw, it's a draw, but keep it simple. Let's all pre-move this. I'm going to search a henchman for the five months. Thank you also to Twerkle Shock Laws for the five months. Let's go here, I guess. That's very sad. Very sad. All right, so we're gonna, I had this against Dubov earlier and I messed it up, but we're going to do the same thing against Jose here. Just castle. Okay, he goes Bishop F8, which is an interesting square to put the bishop. So he's trying to reroute his bishop, I guess. Huh. I mean, I have e4 at all times. I'm going to go here and rook a d1. I'm not sure whether he's, which way he's going here. I'm a little confused by his bishop f8 move. I'll play a3 and b4. I don't really understand what Jose is doing here. It feels like he's combining all the wrong plans. It was queen c7, which also looks kind of weird. I'm just going to go here, maybe. Now, of course, I always have e4, but I'm going to try to play something similar to what I did before with this and bishop f1. I mean, I did this against who? Dubov, was it? And I got a good position, so I might as well do it again. Okay, it goes queen b8. I mean... 
I don't really believe this e5, so I'm just going to do the same thing I did against Dubov and just Fianchito the bishop and just play chess. Goes rook d8. Okay, I go here. Queen a7. Now c5, he's kind of begging me to play it. You know what? I'm just going to do it because I'm getting tired of just waiting around. And I think he's just too slow now with all these ideas to develop. If e5 I just take, I mean, if I get b4, every piece is kind of misplaced here for black. So I don't really believe this. Hmm. I feel like Jose's misplaying this quite severely. Now I can take with a d-pawn, which is actually kind of interesting. I think I'm gonna actually do it. I'm gonna go like bishop c3 and knight b3. And I go, I have rook a1 first, but I think this is the correct first move. I mean, this looks very, very scary to me. I would not want to be black here in this position. This looks horribly scary. I'm gonna go here, maybe knight a5. Let's go here, maybe rook a6. This looks very scary. I think it's a Doramon for the prime. These are so much a Doramon. Okay, now I can obviously trade and play knight a5. I can also go knight a5 right away here. I think I'm gonna play, um, I'm gonna go here. I don't know if Rook C1 does anything, but I still want to keep this B5 idea alive, and I think it's alive here unless I'm crazy. Yeah, let's go for it. I think it's alive because I have Bishop A5. Maybe I could have done it right away, actually. Maybe I could have just done it without even Rook C1, but whatever. Now at least there's a lot of pressure. So I'd pre-move this because it's a safe pre-move. I should win this game, unless I do something really stupid, which is still very, very much a possibility. Now, queen c8, I can still go b6, I can also take. I'm gonna go here because the e5 is still hanging. This looks very, very bad for black. Okay, goes rook e8. I mean, rook a7 makes a lot of sense, but even just bishop b2. I mean, I just don't see how black is doing it. I have rook a7. Goes h4. I can obviously take. I can also go g4. I'm just going to go g4. Let's go here. Rook c7. This must be lost somehow. Let's go here and rook c7. He's hanging on very well, by the way. Let's just go here and rook c. Oh wait, that doesn't threaten anything. Wait, why did I play b7? That was a b7 was a horrible move. He might have had something. Oh, but now he loses. He just gets killed on the diag. Yeah, he just loses. Yeah. All right, and can make a queen. Yeah, we got the win. Very good. Big win. Moved to seven and a half out of eight. We're definitely in the clear lead. I don't know if anyone's going to be on seven or what's going on, but good win. Um, we, we move ourselves along and um, and we're, we're looking pretty good here. We're one point clear right now, but there are a bunch of people still playing. So let's see who's still going. Grishchuk is playing Bornik. Um, Bornik is getting beaten down by Grishchuk here. We're going to be in the same situation as earlier where I'm going to be up half a point. Uh, I think the wide peepos are... Yeah, the wide peepos again, they're just dominating. Wide peepo, baby. You can't you can't really stop the king coming this way too. A7, of course. Yeah. The wide peepos. They're not very wide, but they're wide enough. You go king f4, g5, gg here. Whoa! Thank you to Rusted Hat for the 20 bucks. Thank you so much to Rusted Hat. Okay, now you got takes, and you're gonna get three wide peepos. Uh just king g6. Even e4 here is good enough. E4 takes king h5. 
You just can't stop three peepos. It's just too much. Or you can go here first, yeah. I mean, e4 is a clean way, but this this is good enough. Now you have to go back, and I go e4, e5. So, Grishuk wins, so he's going to be half point behind. We're going to be in the same spot we were earlier. I'm on 7.5. Actually, I've played Zhigalko and Del, so I have to play Grishuk, which means we're going to take a break, come back, and the penultimate, not penultimate, but round 9 is coming up. Probably a black piece against Grishuk. Big game, half point clear. Let's see what happens. Be right back. All right, waiting for round number nine to begin. I mean, I assume I have to play Grishuk. If I don't play Grishuk, then I, I don't know. Okay, here we go. Oh, but I get white against Grishuk. Interesting. Okay, I guess I'm going to play E4 then. Let's play this again. Um, I'll offer him a draw. Yeah, I'll offer him a draw. Grishuk is too strong. I, I'm not in the mood. Um, okay, let's move on to round nine and let's let's finish up in style. Okay, let's see. We have Zhigalko and Dulles who are playing Keck W. Yeah, Keck W. Okay. Minus five. Yeah, we'll refund. Mods refund the refund for that one. Too strong. I mean, I thought it would have black against Grishuk, not white, but I don't know. I'd rather take my chances with Black against somebody like Bortnik or Jospam or somebody than try to try really hard against Grishuk with White and mess up and ruin this event as well. I, just, I would just rather gamble. Draw equals refund. If it's a really fast draw, there should be a refund. If it's a normal play draw, no refunds. Period. Yeah. Why, well, I was expecting a Berlin draw. I expected the Berlin draw, and then, of course, that would also be a refund, but he, he played E6. Keck W scared, not really scared. I'm just not really in the mood. I'd rather gamble with Black against somebody since I played Chigalko and Dulles and they're the two most dangerous players by a country mile here. Um, so I just like my chances. That's just that's just my read of the match of the situation. So let's watch this game between Dulles and Chigalko. Someone can catch me here, obviously, but we'll see. I mean, I drew Sasha in the earlier, earlier, um, earlier title too, so the black pieces. But yeah, it just doesn't make sense to go for broke. Most dangerous player is Eric Hansen. He, how did he do? I didn't actually follow the uh, Meltwater very closely, so I, I don't really know. Um, I don't know how his result was, but did he have a good result or not? Because I, I, I honestly didn't follow it all, so I have no idea. I, I followed a little bit the last like two to three days. Oh, he finished in 12th, which is... 12th out of 16 can be decent, though. It's not so bad, depending. 12 out of 16 is not so bad, depending. But, yeah. The middle of the pack was bunched up. Okay, yeah. What does Grishuk have to gain by a draw? He's playing with the black pieces, and he figures, okay, I can win two games at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll try to win hard with white. You expect him to press. And if he wins that, then in the last round with black, he can try hard to win. And he tries hard against somebody who's, who's objectively a little bit weaker than me, so he probably figures he has better chances. Would I be happy to take a draw by his Grishuk I'm behind? I probably would. If, if I had black there against Grishuk, I'm a half point down. I'd probably take the draw, too, honestly. Because again, it's there are only two people on seven, so it's not like there are like six people who can get to eight. I mean, there are only two people, and only one of them can get to eight. So yeah, weaker than you, huh, Pago? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, exactly, you guys. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, that's what I would say. Is I think I think actually, if I'm in the same situation with only two guys behind, I'm fine with a draw, especially because Grishuk also has a pretty godly tiebreak here. He's got a much better, well, I guess Jigalko could pass him on tiebreak, but he's got a pretty good tiebreak. So, good tiebreak, very few people who can get, only one can get to eight, so it doesn't really make sense. Because if you if you try one with black and you lose here, your tournament's over. So, yeah. Okay, now he's trying to do Bob. Oh, are we gonna get a draw here? <laughs> Probably gonna get a dirty draw of Queen D seven, Queen C two. I mean, Dubov can't really do anything because otherwise, I mean, Dubov is probably worse. So he tries Queen B seven. Trying very hard. I mean, I think Zhigalko might just might just mop the floor now. Queen B three, C four, C five, or Queen C two, Queen C two, C four, C five looks very scary to me. Yeah, this looks very scary. C4, C5. Yeah, 
So Dubov's gonna try here, and we're gonna see if Dubov's attempt to try works or it backfires horribly. I think C4, Queen C4 is still very strong here for White. Yeah, this looks kind of scary, but maybe it's okay for Dubov. He has 98 to hold the pawn, like Rook B8 and 98, kind of. Yeah, he's gonna go here on 98. Rook A4, okay, probably Bishop D2 or Rook C1. Probably Bishop D2. Actually, the more I look at this, the less I like what uh, Zhigalko has done here. But still very hard to judge. Probably Bishop D2. Objectively speaking, is Dubov stronger than Zhigalko and Blitz? Absolutely, yeah. He's, he's definitely a stronger player, yeah. No doubt about it. Did I win the AMTT? No, unfortunately I lost the final round, you guys, so I ended up getting third. Dar uh, Darius, Darius Swirts, the, the famous American chess player, ended up winning uh, winning the first title Tuesday. Very happy for him. I don't think he's really done well in any of these sorts of events, so it's quite nice to see. Yeah, quite nice to see. Maybe Queen B3, maybe Rook C1. I'd probably play Queen B3 here and then Rook C1, something like this and this. Or Queen B3, maybe B5, B6. We'll see what he does here. I think queen b3 has got to be the right move, though. Uh, can we have a back the old layout? This The chessboard's a mess. Uh, yes, you guys. We're only using this for today. I want to be very clear about that. We're only using this board for today. We will be going back to the regular ICC and glass um, uh, for when we play the RCC on the weekend again. Yeah. No, no, no. No worries, you guys. No worries. It's just, it's just an old throwback. Yeah, Queen C2, though, looks scary. Rook C1 or Queen C2? Um, I assume you trade. You also maybe have Knight... Oh, is Knight C4... No, Knight C4 takes... takes. Okay, trades. I guess you gotta go Queen C4 here, and then Knight C4. What? Oh, what happened to Zhigalko? Wait, I wasn't even looking at time. What the heck? Did Zhigalko get disconnected or something? I wasn't even looking at time. What the heck? I wasn't even looking at the clock, but what the heck was that? Must be an internet connection. Yeah, must be an internet connection. Yeah, no other explanation for that. That's very weird. Anyway, okay, so we're tied for the lead, two rounds to go. Uh, I guess I have to play, I don't know who I play. I still should have the better tie breaks. So if I, I control my own destiny here if I win out. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so next game starting a second. I should play Angry Twin or somebody, I guess. Yeah, I get Angry Twin, I don't... Who is this? I don't know who this is. This is some Russian GM, I have no idea. Okay. It's gonna say solid probably at this point. I'm leading the tournament. And he has to win, it draws no good for him here. Really? I mean, it draws no good for him. There's no way you can force a draw, right? Really? He's a half point down. He's happy to happy to draw. <sighs> He's happy to make a draw here. Seriously? Oh, wait, no, he's gonna play. Never mind. Okay, we got a game. He's gonna play. gonna play okay so I guess I will go here maybe I mean I have d4 I thought let's go here and take I'm actually very surprised I think I'm going to go here to open the diags. Let's do it. I, I don't believe him. I mean, he can take castles, but it's going to be wild. I'm getting a big attack. 
So we're gonna play knight b3. Hmm. I should not be worse here. If anything, I should be better. This thing for a long time here. Probably is gonna take, so I'll pre-move it. That seems like a mistake to me. I think that's actually a fairly serious mistake by my opponent. Doesn't seem right either. I have c4 here. Wait a second. I should be winning somehow. I just have to be smart about this. I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna go here to hit the pawn. Oh, maybe I'd c6 and bishop d8 or something. I don't know, whatever. Okay, this guy's very slow though. Yeah, that's the move I expected. Uh, if I take c4, c4. Okay, I mean, I, I gotta go for it. Or b4, I guess. Ah, I blundered, of course. Shoot. Oh, why did I do that? So stupid. Oh, wait, no, I see. Wait, no, maybe I have c3 and bishop b4. Wait. Can we six check? I do have this. Maybe I'm stupid. Cause rook b4, bishop d2 is just bad. I think, I think it was bad, I don't know. Okay, does it, so I go here of course. Back. I do have king c6 though. Well, I have to take, only move. Don't have any other moves. Bishop e4, rook a5. King e6 is a move. Um. King c6, take six, d5. I think this is probably the right approach. It's got no time though, so let's go back. I mean, it's very low on time here. So I go here, rook d5. I think this should be winning for me. Rook c5, f4, king d5, takes, takes. f4, king of g3, g5, takes. That's an outside pawn, is that winning? It's a very critical moment. Rook c5, church rate, f4. Three pawns. I think this is winning. I think it's a winning end game. f4, g5, takes, takes. He can't create a pass pawn. I think it's winning. Well, that's just not gonna work, so I just go king f5. Yeah, we're gonna get a win.
All right, get the win. Move to nine out of ten. Um, let me check that. Was that actually correct? Wait, let's go back. Yeah, this is winning, right? Because if he takes, I mean, this should be winning, right? Because he, the thing is, White can never create a pass pawn here. So, like, even if we get this position, he can't create a pass pawn. I just, I just outweigh him, and there's no pass pawn because I'm here. I take. So he can't he can't create a pass pawn. So it, it is winning. So it's good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So he got the win. We moved to nine out of ten. Um, let's see. Dubov is still playing. Uh, Jose is better. So if anything, this is going to be a rook g three. Jose can't lose this. King g three and rook c one. Oh, rook c four. Oh, nice move by Dubov to save it. Yeah, Dubov should draw this game now. Wow. Wow. Dubov's going to save this draw, but even though he saves it, that does mean I'm leading. I'm going to be up half point going to round 11 again. Exact same situation as before. Um, Dubov's going to have eight and a half. But I have a massive, I'm going to have a massive tie break again. I think. Thing is, there's increments, so Dubov can't really lose this. Not sure if I'm actually guaranteed to win though with a draw because it's only it's only 4.5. It's a 4.5 differential. Tiebreak's four and a half, so I think it's good enough if I draw, but ah, we'll see. The good thing is I just won with black, so I have the white pieces in the final round. Or I should have the white pieces. This will be a draw. Oh wait, Grishuk's on eight and a half too, I just realized. So it's actually not a guarantee. Okay, so let's see, what are the standings? I mean, I assume I'm, I'm probably, eh, it's four and a half. And I get Paravian, of course, in round nine. And the guy I lost to in the previous round. Okay, no, no, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be very serious now. So uh, it's, it's payback time. I can obviously take on F6, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna play this like a rock solid line. No nonsense here. Oh, he's going to take. Interesting. I guess I'll just take and go here and C4. I mean, I assume a draw is good enough for me. So as long as I'm, as long as I play super solid here, I mean, I shouldn't really be in any danger. Let's go Knight C3. Oh, I can obviously trade. I, I assume Knight C3 and Queen F3 must be right here. And he goes there. It's a question of how I want to play this. I'll take and go here, maybe. Hmm. So he's trying to play e5. I can go e4 here, maybe. Actually, why not? Go here. Rook f1, of course. Knight d5 at some point as well. Should be very, very pleasantly plus equal for me here. He plays knight e8, I expected that. Um, take and go here and queen c3 maybe. And knight f6, I also can just go knight f4, target the pawns here. He's trying to do something, I don't quite know what. Maybe b5 is this idea here. Let's just go here. Mm. Go here. Plays a5, which I think is a mistake, because now I can reroute the knight. Maybe mistake is too strong a word used, but it feels like white should be better here. Oh, I'm not actually all that happy with the way I played this. Yeah, rook c7 is a pretty good move. 
Um, I can play knight d4. I can also trade and play rook c1. I think I'm going to trade and go rook c1. Because now I have knight d4, knight c6, I assume. Let's go here. I also have knight c6, which is potentially GG's. I also have rook c6. I also have queen g5. Wait, what? I think he just blundered. Rook c8, knight e7 is GG. And now I win a5 and I should win the game. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. I mean, that's a pawn. I'm going to take it, of course. Let's go here. Hit the pawn. Actually, I'll take the mouse off the board. So I've got, I'm up time. Uh, and I, a mouse flip here would be absolutely tragic. So let's focus. I mean, this is completely lost for black here, so let's see what he's going to do. The reason it's completely lost because I have two connected pawns on the edge of the board. Queen b6 is good enough. Um, queen d4 seems... Queen b6 is probably the easy way to win this. But rook d1 is also looks like a very solid choice. Going d5... Takes, takes. Eh. Maybe just queen d4. Yeah, just keep it very simple here. No need to get cheeky. Goes e5, which I absolutely hate. Uh, I guess I'll go... Wait a second. My queen's on d4, right? So, queen b6 definitely is good enough now. But he has knight c5, b4 takes, a4, d5, a5, d4, a6, d3, a7... Knight c3 is still some tricks. Okay, let's just keep it simple. Probably thinking a little bit too much here, because it should be, I mean, this is very straightforward. So again, now I'm... I mean, this is winning for me, but I'm not very happy with the way I've played this. I mean, if d5 I just take, I rook d1. I also have g3. I do have queen d6. Queen d6. Queen e2. Yeah, he still, he still has some tricks here. Right, let's just go here. Take all the, all the fun out of the position. I could have played h4 too, but, eh, whatever. Okay, now he goes there, which does hang the pawns. Now queen e2, it's a check. So I take rook a2, knight g4. Yeah, this, this has to be winning. Because queen e2 loses to queen e5. That's why this is important. Otherwise, queen e2 with the king on g8, and it's very dangerous. But this... I mean, as far as I can tell, this is just game over. I'm up, what, two pawns? Yeah. Because knight g4, am I missing something? I don't think so. Uh, he's got rook a6, I guess. But so what? I just take and take. It's not trivial, but... Okay, it goes knight e6. I think this is also... Rook a6 was, was the only try, I think. Go here and check, I guess. Yeah. All right. We got the win. Good payback. Some good revenge for what happened earlier. Um. Oh, I feel like just taking a deep breath. Okay, let's take. Let's go check. Let's go here. Threaten mate in one. Okay, so trying to survive a valiant effort here. Um, I mean, h4 is one way to mate. I think I'm just, yeah, I think I'm going to go check in h4. Just checkmate in one next move. Yeah, there we go. We got the win, and with it, we win. Uh, we win Title Tuesday. 
Um, yeah, it's a nice bounce back. It's really nice to win the final round against Pravian, of all people, because, I mean, I should have won the early title Tuesday, but ah, it is what it is. You, you can't you can't win them all. So, 